Hi, thank you so much for agreeing to run ProPresenter for the table. This is a very important part of the ministry that we do for this weekly service. Uh, as you know, if you've been a part of the service for any um, length of time at all, it's one of those things that people don't uh, maybe notice unless something goes wrong. Um, but it does, it is a signature piece of what the service looks and feels like that we have these things projected. So just want to say thank you. It's not uh, something that I take for granted. We use a piece of software called ProPresenter and we use it on the iMac. So <clears throat> a couple of things here about the Mac um, that I want you to be aware of. First I want to talk about the the screens. We have three screens in Johnson Hall. We have um, what I'll call the flat screen, the flat screen uh, television monitor uh, which is what we in the or what I use when I'm in front of the congregation and the priest will use um, and then we have this what I'm looking at right now what we would actually call the, the computer monitor it's the primary monitor um, and then we have the screen behind the altar <clears throat> and the way it's set up is left to right so the flat screen TV then this computer monitor with the Apple logo and then the projector um, there are the the screen projection above the altar so why am I telling you all that I'm telling you all that because the mouse cursor can go all the way to the left and get up on that flat screen monitor or it can go all the way to the right depending on how it's configured and get on the project projection projector screen behind the altar so sometimes you're sitting down here and you can't find your mouse uh, which is aggravating so if but if you do you just keep going left for a while and then right for a while you can also if you shake your um, finger on the trackpad the mouse magnifies and that helps you uh, see it too so okay so just be aware that the mouse that the screen that you're looking at is in the middle of the other two displays so if you can't find your mouse cursor it might actually be on one the screen to the left or the screen to the right okay enough about that so what you want to do when you are ready to run ProPresenter what I suggest you do is come up here before you even launch the program this icon here with the cloud that says Pro is the ProPresenter cloud we use a feature of ProPresenter called Sync for synchronization because um, there's at least three of us that work on these slides throughout the week and we're usually working on our own computers we sync all the material and the changes to the cloud and then the cloud pushes them back so to make sure that you're going to be working with the latest changes that we may have made let's go ahead and get into the habit of syncing before we launch you see it's preparing data it doesn't take long to sync and now it says it's synced at uh, 246 which is exactly the Current time. Okay, now I'm ready to launch ProPresenter. I'm going to come down here to the taskbar and launch ProPresenter proper. Okay, let me show you a little bit of the layout of ProPresenter. There's some great tutorial videos online if you want to just Google ProPresenter how to videos. You can do that. A lot of them have to do with how to create. A presentation and since you're not creating them it's not something you have to know right away to do what we're asking you to do here which is execute the uh, presentation or operate the slides um, but those are available to you I'm just going to try to cut to the chase about how to operate the slides okay so what we have here on the left hand side this is a preview window this is what the output is going to look like this is our library all of this right here I could scroll and it has all of our song content, the liturgical slides, and scriptures. And then down here we have uh, the, the playlists. The playlist is a, it's not a document, but, but the playlists contain aliases of documents of the, what we're going to use for a particular service at the table. So for our purposes, the playlist will include what songs we're singing for that given Sunday. So, you want to sit down here, and um, I tend to label things starting with the year. So, this is 2017, February the 5th. 
the table. And if you were to drag this on, you'd see it says fifth Sunday after the Epiphany. Okay? But you want to make sure that you're on the correct playlist for the day. And then here are all of the songs. These are references to the documents we're going to use that day. The actual documents live here in the library, but these are just kind of shortcuts and pointing to them. Why am I telling you all that? I'm telling you that because you don't need to worry about anything here in the library. As a matter of fact, you can go here and click this, and you'll only see the playlist, which is, might be exactly what you want to do. But if you need to see the library, that button just kind of toggles it back and forth. Okay? This here is going to be important, and I'll tell you more about that in a little bit. This is what either the congregation is seeing or what we're seeing when we look at the flat screen display. Okay, so for Given Sunday, for example, we start with this liturgy background. When I click on it, it comes up on the screen. You, can, you have the preview of it right here. And you can see that there's some video motion it just plays up there. And it will loop over and over until I change to the next screen. Some people like, this is a contiguous button, and it will bring up everything in the playlist. Uh, I know Jim likes to do that. Uh, I personally don't like to do that because I like to see exactly what I'm looking at. So here is a sing-along background. I'm going to resize this. You can see the, um, oops. You can see the preview a little bit better. So this is what's on the screen. And so this is um, what's called the background. And it will stay there until there's another background or until we tell it to clear. So when I go to the next song, in this case, Whom Shall I Fear, when I start to play it, you see the words come up. These words come up on that background. And this is what it looks like on the screen for the congregation. And you'll recognize that. I can maneuver to the different slides by either hitting the space bar, and it will go in order, uh, or I can do the arrow keys, left and right arrow keys, or I can click on them with the mouse or the touchpad. And that's how I'll navigate the song. But you see that the same background that we put up right here is displaying for all of these until there's a different background. That's how you go from slide to slide. Now, I will um, sometimes put in notes for the slide operator. Like here's an example, Whom Shall I Fear? We actually sing that two times. Um, I don't like to put two identical lines up on the screen. If I can just put one, and I'll just put a note to you. We sing that two times. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Okay, so be sure you're paying attention to those notes because that will tell you when to go when to advance to the next slide. Otherwise, I try really hard to, the slide is just always the next slide. So I try to lay it out like I'm planning on doing it. Um, there's a couple of challenges in the service and, and we'll get to that, all right? But that's how you navigate slides within a song. Okay, this here is, um, called the stage display. This is what's on the flat screen monitor. If you can't get it to do that here, um, it turns off and on under preferences. And enable stage display. This should be checked, but I'm just giving you that as a troubleshooting tip. That should stay enabled. Okay, and so what this is helpful for is it's telling me, or whoever is leading the songs, on this side of the, of the screen is what is being shown to the congregation right now. And this is just showing what the upcoming slide is. All right, so if I were running this, I would like to see the stage display rather than the uh, congregation display or the screen behind the altar because if I turn on the stage display while I'm sitting here I can see all three screens or I can see what's on all, all three screens I can see what's on the stage display here 
I can see what I need to see as far as operating the executing the playlist, and I can see the screen uh, up there behind the altar so I can see what the congregation is saying. This is my preferences on slide advancement. If we are starting a song and I'm not singing yet, I would rather there not be lyric on the screen. I would rather wait until just before I start to sing. Um, so the, one of the reasons why it's, it's important for you to know the songs that we're singing, you kind of know what the intro is, and we'll get an, uh, an intuition as far as when I'm going to start to sing. A big clue is when I start to get close to the microphone. Okay, And then you want to advance the slide. Uh, this is an art, but you want to advance the slide just the moment before it's needed. So if you're thinking you're in the congregation, when would you need to see it? And pretty much that's when you would, that's when you would hit it. Sometimes I'll have blank slides in the middle of the song, like this one. You know, the one who reigns forever. Here's a friend of mine, God of angel armies is always by my side. Then you can go ahead and go to the blank slide, because that probably means that there's an instrumental interlude, and we're not going to sing for a moment. And then you come on back up. Okay? All right. And then you'll just go through each section. Click, advanced and you'll go through both the liturgy and the songs. Now, I said that I like to have the, um, I try my very best to have the order just straight in the playlist, so all you have to do is hit the space bar. Where it gets a little bit tricky is the communion, um, because the communion song, I never know how long we're gonna play it, uh, because I'm watching as people are taking communion, and I'll try to, um, I'll try to make it fit. All that to say, there's a little bit of give and take on communion. You'll just have to watch me um, if I start singing. When I stop, start singing, put the lyric up for me. Uh, if I stop singing, go to a blank slide, and just know the song, and just uh, pay attention, and uh, you'll learn to follow me. Oh, I have some timed sequences, usually every week. Um, one of them will start right here under walk-in. So when you first get here, this liturgy background can stay. So you're coming at 815, right? Um, when you're through checking the slides and all that stuff, just you leave this liturgy background up there. And then walk-in. See this little clock icon? It means that this I have these already automatically timed. Uh, this will run for five minutes. After five minutes, it will advance to what I call our focus verse, our Bible focus verse. And then after five minutes, we'll go back to this slide. I'll put it to this display just, just because you're not in Johnson Hall right now to see the screen. So at 8.45, you're just going to click that, and then it will run for the next 15 minutes by itself. The same thing happens at the closing credits. I'll click that, you know, when we're through, and then it will advance itself uh, through the players in the band, uh, and then also listing of the copyright holders for the songs that we sang. That's about all I can think of for your first Sunday. We will have a checklist here for you um, of different things to do as far as like turning on the projector, turning on the flat screen. And so forth. Thank you, thank you, thank you.